Now we're going to take about five minutes to warm up and then after that I'll explain what we're going to do next, okay? So I'm going to show you everything. So if you're not sure about my descriptions of things, just look at me and copy me, okay? I will show a little bit and then I will come and watch as well. So for the first warm up we're going to do, we're going to keep changing. Um, each 30 seconds, I'm going to say change and we change exercise, all right? I'm just going to flip my screen back. How do I? Oh, wait. Because you've pinned me, haven't you? Well, that's it. I can see everyone now. Okay. So find your space. Okay. Jogging on the spot. Let's get nice and warm. Next exercise, you need your gi. Okay, change. If you have your gi, I know some of you are wearing your gi, and I want to drop and catch your gi, one hand to the other hand, okay? For the session today, you will need a gi that you can use for training, okay? So maybe if you have another one and you want to wear one, or you can wear a t-shirt for training, okay? Put this one down. Now, star jumps. Keep going. Okay, now squats. Nice and easy, just to warm up. Keep going, 10 more seconds, and we go back to jogging on the spot. Okay, change. Ten more seconds, keep going. Okay, and next, we do Ushimata turns with a big stretch. Okay. Nice big stretch on your legs. Ten more seconds. Okay, and change. Go down to your back. Stand up. Go down to your front. Stand up. Go down to your back. Okay, that's it. Keep moving. Back and chest. Ten more seconds. If you can't do this, go back to your star jumps. Okay, and last one. If I'm seeing a gear with squats. Nelly there. And stop. Okay. We shall be breathing a bit heavy. 
feeling warmer. Okay? So for your session, I don't mind if you have one gi you want to wear, but you need one gi to train with, okay? And you also need your belt to train with, okay? It's easy equipment. Everybody has a gi, everybody has a belt, okay? If you have uchikomi bands, great. If you don't have uchikomi bands, it's fine. You can do uchikomi by yourself. Or if you have a partner, you can do uchikomi with your partner, okay? Everything that I do, I'll do by myself because I'm alone today. So we'll make sure that every exercise can suit everyone. All right. So for the main part of the session, we're going to do a circuit that has um, judo movements or judo elements. But also, I want you to work hard. Okay. So before we start, one of the exercises, I want to show you what it is. It's um, foot patterns, foot movements for my one of my favorite um, throws, Ochi Harry. Okay. So by yourself, I take my hands up as if I'm holding the gi. Okay, you can just follow me as we go along with the steps. I want to take my attacking foot. For me, that's my right foot because I'm right handed. If you're left, take your left foot. And I want to just draw a big circle with your big toe. Draw a big circle with your big toe. Okay? You notice when I do this, I don't lose my balance and go side to side. I bend my support leg. And when I draw my circle, I have really good posture. Okay? Cool. So for the steps. First, my right leg. Step one. Comes forward. Close to my partner. Step two, my left leg comes close and behind. Okay? So one, two. Now for my big sweep, three. Okay? Then to finish it off, I really want my support leg to work, okay, and to get stronger. So when I step, one, two, three, sweep, four, hop forwards. Okay, one, two, three, sweep, hop forwards. Okay, and we continue doing this. So one, two, three, hop forwards. One, two, three, hop forwards. Okay, make sure you keep good posture, good balance, and think about which way your hips must be facing, must be facing forwards, okay? So, this is the only technique that we're gonna use in the circuit. And I'm gonna tell you what the circuit is, but as we go along, I'll just keep shouting them out. So the first exercise is Uchikomi. Uchikomi by yourself, Uchikomi with your band or your belt, or if you have a partner, Uchikomi, you do one, they do one. You do one, they do one. Okay, for the second exercise, you need your gi. And you want to take it by the sleeve. Okay? Putting my arms out in front, I want to roll the sleeve of my gi up. Up and down. Okay? This is for keeping all the gripping muscles alive while we're stuck at home. Third exercise, you need your belt. Okay? Lay your belt flat on the mat or in your space, in your garden, wherever you are. And we're going to use this belt as a ladder. Okay? Hopefully you can all see my feet. Okay, I want to step over and under, but really fast, okay? Okay, 
Third exercise. Fourth exercise. Shrimping on your backs, like this, okay? Or if you cannot do that, because you don't have the mat or the space, come onto your front, and I want you to do Spider-Man push-up, okay? So, choice. You do shrimping on your back or push-ups on your front. If you are struggling with either of those, I just want you to go into plank position for 45 seconds, okay? Fifth exercise. We're going to do shadow work, okay? This is the chance for us to practice the move that I just showed you. Or if you feel like you want to practice something else, that's fine, okay? But for me, I'm going to be doing my steps, okay? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay? That's the fifth exercise. And the last exercise is just going to be to really, really get your heart going, really get you working. We're going to finish on burpees. All right? So everyone, if you don't know what burpees are, start standing up. You go down. Chest and legs to the floor, up, jump up. If you're little and that's gonna to be too hard, I want you to do star jumps. Okay? Right, perfect. That's our six exercises. I'm gonna set a timer. And don't worry, I'm gonna shout everything out as we go along, okay? We get 15 seconds rest in between each exercise so you have time to get your equipment. Does anybody have any questions? No, I think we're good. Okay. So we start off with 45 seconds for our first set. And each time the time will come down so that we can get faster. Okay. Let's take our positions. Starting off with Uchikomi. Shadow Uchikomi, band Uchikomi, or Uchikomi one for one with your partner. We're gonna start in 10 seconds. Three, two, one, let's go. Keep going. We're halfway. Keep keep doing your uchikomi. Nice. Ten seconds. Really good, guys. And rest. Okay, get your gi. Remember, we're rolling it with our arms nice and straight, okay? Keep your hands up. Let's go. Halfway. Keep going, don't let your arms fall. Keep them up. Ten seconds. Don't let them fall. Three, two, one, rest. Okay, get your belt ready. Make your ladder. Remember, fast feet over and under. 
Let's go. Keep going. Nice. <laughs> Excellent, guys. Keep going. Five more seconds. And rest. Excellent work. Next exercise. Shrimping on your back, or if you can't do that, we do the plank push-ups. Okay, let's go. Fifteen seconds. Excellent, guys. Keep working. Nice. Nearly there. And rest. Okay, up on your feet. I'm going to be doing my Ochi Gary, my foot patterns with my hopping. Okay. Let's go. Keep going. Good, keep your posture upright, keep your posture good. That's it, and your hips facing forward. And rest. Okay, last exercise. Remember, this is the one where we have to push ourselves. Just as many as you can do, burpees. Three, two, one, let's go. Keep going, you're already halfway. Remember, if you can't do that, this one, do star jumps, okay? Excellent, nearly there now. Five more seconds. And rest. Well done. We've got over two minutes rest. And then we will repeat the circuit. Excellent, guys. Everybody good? Good. <sighs> Keep moving your body. It's not a long, long rest. Okay. This time we go to 40 seconds work, okay? So a little bit less than last time. 
So when, once we start getting tired, we keep trying to push and give the same quality, okay? Keep thinking about the quality of your movement. We want to work hard, but we also want to practice things with quality. Okay, we have about 30 seconds before we're going to start. Okay, about 15. Start my timer. Okay, we start with the Chikomi. Let's go. Keep going. 20 seconds to go. Very nice. Great, guys. 10 seconds. Keep the quality. Three, two, one, and rest. Okay, get your gi. If you don't have your gi, you can use your belt as well to do your roll ups. Let's go. Only 40 seconds. Remember to straighten those arms, okay? Keep those arms straight. That's it. We want to work hard. Keep going, I'm coming to watch. We have 10 more seconds. If you don't have your gi, you can do this. Rest. Okay, get your belt ready. Make your ladder. Let's go. Excellent, we're halfway. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, and rest. Okay, we're on our backs now doing our shrimping movement or on your front doing the Spider Man push ups. Okay, let's go. Keep working. Fifteen seconds. <laughs> Keep going, guys. Some of you are funny. <laughs> Five seconds. Three, two, one, and rest. Okay. Let's do your shadow work now. I say, Jimmy, everyone's going to understand me. Okay. What do you mean?
Let's go. 20 seconds. Nice. Put your hands up. Keep going, keep going. A few more. That's it, and rest. Okay, we're into our last exercise now. Remember those burpees, they're gonna to be tough. But let's try and go right to the end. Let's go, Jimmy. going to work for 30 seconds okay so an even bigger drop you're doing great guys keep working hard okay one minute 30 right left <laughs> Good job, guys. We have about one minute. Let's make this one our best set, okay? Everybody knows what they're doing now. We have 30 seconds left before we begin. Twenty seconds. Ten. Okay, let's go. Keep going. Three more seconds left. And rest. Okay, grab your gi. Okay, let's go. So if you want to advance this exercise, mainly for coaches, Sometimes I've been putting some weight down the other sleeve and that's been making it a little bit heavier and a little bit more challenging. Okay? Keep going, guys. Keeping those arms out straight. I'm coming to watch. And rest. Okay, get your belt ready.
Let's go. Excellent. Keep going. Really focus on that coordination. And rest. Okay, we're halfway. Shrimping now. All those plank push ups. Let's get ready. Let's go. And rest. Excellent. Okay. Back to our shadow work now. Hey, Jimmy. Good, keep going, keep working. And rest. Okay, last exercise. Those burpees. Okay, let's go even faster than we did last time, only 30 seconds. Three, two, one, let's go. And Jimmy. Three, two, one. Mate. Well done, guys. Your workout is complete. Everyone did amazing. Hopefully you're sweaty like me. Okay. So, while we take our breath back, maybe we should uh, have a little cool down, have a little stretch. Okay, and that's the time if anyone has any questions that they wanna ask. Okay. I've got a question if I can. Yeah. Um, so you're a very dedicated uh, athlete and uh, numerous uh, champion world and Olympic. How do you find the time? How do you plan your day? How do you get motivated to keep going for all of this? Because they are very often like family pressures or work pressures. How do you manage all of that? Um, it's hard. It's, it's really, really tough. But I think for me, I try and prioritize things. So... I mean, it's kind of been quite selfish. My, my priority for most of my life has been, you know, my judo, my judo career. And, and that's something everyone's really under, understanding about. Um, so I normally try and plan my day around my training and get training done. And for me, I'm the most productive in the morning. So I would always say to people, it's about identifying where you work the most, where you're most productive. For me, that's the morning. So if I want to get a session done, I get it done in the morning like I would if I was training in the center and then that means you know by lunchtime I can have my lunch I can walk my dog and I know that I've done my job for the day and then from the afternoon it's time for me to you know I like cooking I, I like to um, do hobbies and, and do the gardening and things like that so and it's about uh, doing all those other things and 
And that's why it's been really nice for me in the evenings to be able to run these classes because my evenings are usually really free. So it's nice for me to give up some of my free time, spend some time with the judo community and stay, yeah, stay connected. It's, it's been fun. So yeah, it's just about being organized and finding out when you're most productive and yeah, getting those jobs done first thing in the morning. Hope that answered your question. We've got a few questions that people have sent in, Nakoda. So, Into the um, chat, Michelle, or to you? Uh, they've sent it to me um, when, they, when they signed up for the, the event. They've sent in questions as well. Um, okay. So, so a few that came up was, uh, who was your idol when you were growing up? Who did you look up to in the judo world? Um, I, my knowledge of actual the judo world was very, very limited growing up. I, I, I actually didn't. Um, my first sort of judo idol was actually um, Karen Matsumoto and that's because I was volunteering at the London 2012 Olympics and I got tickets to watch 57s that day and I watched her and anyone who would have seen any of the fights you know would have known that she was amazing that day and she won gold so she was kind of like my first judo idol but prior to that growing up I, I definitely looked up to other kids in my club so kids that were either the grade above me or a couple grades above me they were the kids that I aspired to be, to be as good as. Um, and also I would say that my coaches have been very big influences in my judo career. Um, just pushing me really, getting me to believe in myself um, and to go to that next level. So I would definitely say peers, coaches, and then later on, I definitely really started to idolize Matsumoto going into my senior career. Yeah. She's an amazing fighter, isn't she? Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> I never got to fight her. Never got to fight her. No. It's a, it's a shame, but it's also good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the next question was, um, you fought in a lot of big finals or big events, world finals, uh, Olympic games, things like that. Um, how do you handle your nerves, especially going into the big fights, like final fights? How did you, what do you use to cope with, uh, with nerves? Yeah, I, I, I like to do a lot of, a lot of self-talk and a lot of imagery. So self-talk is um, where I try and normalize things in my head. I try and tell myself that, you know, this is, this is just judo. This is something that I get up every morning, I go to training, I do judo. So this is something I'm really familiar with. And it's no different to usual, you're going out, it's you fighting another person. Um, so I try and normalize things and keep things, you know, calm and I try and keep myself grounded. That really helps me to control my nerves and to go out there with a level head. Um, and then also from the imagery side of things, I always work better with everything in life if I feel like I'm one step ahead. So when I do my imagery, I already imagine myself walking out onto the mat, bowing on, you know, facing my opponent and actually taking the first move or taking the first grip. So I go through all of that while I'm waiting to go out to fight. By the time I actually get there, I feel like I've walked through it and I'm, I'm ready for it. So yeah, those are kind of two, two ways for me that I, I deal with my nerves. That's, uh, that's re really interesting because that's what, um, when we had Jimmy Pedro in Scotland, he was saying the same thing that with the, the secret he had with Kayla and with Travis and with Marty Malloy and stuff was this visualization that they felt that they had already fought that fight. Yeah. Um, before, they, before they had taken a grip, they felt that they were already in it. Um, yeah. He puts that, it's, it's amazing. Um, what to you is the best thing about judo? Um, my, my, oh, the best thing about judo for me. It's a tough one. <laughs> Yeah, no, the thing I'm definitely missing the most is, is that feeling of, you know, doing a really, really good throw, throwing people. And everyone laughs and says, well, throwing people. I'm like, yeah, throwing people. That makes me feel good. So I definitely miss that. That's a, an amazing thing about judo. I miss traveling. I miss seeing my friends around the world. Um, I miss the buzz that you get when you're in competitions and you do well. Um, but the other greatest thing about judo as well, that for me, it's such an inclusive sport that everyone can take part. It doesn't matter what size you are, what height you are, what weight you are, anyone can do it. So yeah, I, for me, judo will always be my, my favorite sport. Excellent. Uh, what was your favorite place to compete? 
Have you got a favourite venue, favourite country? Yeah, I do actually. Um, so um, there's two and they're for different reasons. So firstly, the Commonwealth Games uh, competing in Glasgow is, is just a day and an event I'm never going to forget. It was just amazing to, to kind of be on home soil, to have people in the crowd that you knew and, you know, to have every seat filled as well in the venue. That's something that we don't always get traveling around the world. So that was incredible. But then the second place for me is um, where I won my silver at the world. That was in Baku in Azerbaijan. And for some reason, it's just a really lucky venue for me. I, every time I've gone there, I've won a medal. Actually, every time I've gone there, I've got to the final. So um, that place for me has just been a lucky charm so far in my career. <laughs> Shame they don't have the Olympics. We need to we need to get Olympics. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, the last one that I've got that people have sent is um, what was your hardest match or your fiercest uh, rival? Who's uh, who do you have the biggest uh, scraps with? <laughs> oh, so um, again, I have two, and do you know what? They both happen to be French players. Um, yeah. So. Probably the hardest fight, individual fight I've probably ever had, and I guess loss as well, it was definitely the Olympic Games where I came up against um, Autumn Pavio in the second round, um, which I narrowly lost out. So I guess that was definitely a really hard fight and a really hard loss. But then her um, teammate, Helen Resseval, who was also going for that Olympic Games, and they ended up picking Autumn instead, um, she was probably my, my fierce rival because we had fought each other eight times and I had lost eight times. So to fight someone that many times over you know, the course of four years and to not have beaten them once was just demoralizing. You know, I'd lost to her at Europeans, at World Championships, at European Cups, literally every, every level of event. And um, good news though, the last two times before I, I have beaten her. So hopefully I've kind of blown that away now and that's not something that's gonna stay with me for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Sign of persistence, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's all the questions people have sent in. Has anyone got another question from the call? Unmute your mic and we can, uh, I'll flick through screens and see, stick your hand up or... Aiden's got a question, go for it Aiden. How long have you been doing judo? So, um, I started judo when I was six years old. I turned 27 last month, so I think I've been doing judo about 21 years now. So yeah, it's Just been a long time. <laughs> uh, who's this? What for you was the key for throwing and training? Uh, the key for throwing? Um, I would definitely say that, I mean, anyone who's watched me fight would probably say that I'm quite uh, patient. I take my time, I, I focus on dominating the grip and dominating the movement. And then I kind of just wait sometimes for the right moment. I mean, some of my coaches would say I wait too long. Um, but yeah, for me, it's definitely been dominating the grip. It, I felt like if I didn't ever have the right grip, it would be really hard for me to execute my judo. So having the right grip, I'm just waiting for that right moment when it feels, when it feels just right. Awesome. Anyone else got a question for us? Someone yes. put something in the chat. Oh my power. Mishihiro, uh, how do we unmute? Wait just now. Uh, I can't Hi. find him. Nice ah. to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Muncha, eh, to, eh, あなたにとって柔道とは何ですかオリンピックとあまずあなたにとってオリンピックとは何ですか柔道とは何ですか中村先生あの訳してもらっていいですかねえ、my friend uh Australia coach 中村えっとインストラクター。Nakamura will translate for us. Okay. Hi, Nicola. Hi. Hey. Thank you for joining. <laughs> and uh, Gordon Sensei, thank you for inviting us. Thank you very much. Um, well, Miguel Sensei asked to you, um, what, is your, uh, what is Olympic for you? And also, what is Judo for you? 
So what is, um, Olympic for me is, is everything. It's my 21 years of all the hard work and effort and the injuries and the knockbacks and the times that I thought I, I couldn't do something and I overcame it and achieved it. It's all the trials and tribulations that you go through with judo and all the reward all in one. So the chance to compete at Olympic Games is just so special. It's so unique and it's something that will stay with you for the rest of your life. So for me to compete in the Olympic Games is just for me the biggest honor. And I, I think you know, moving forwards in life, it will be really hard for me to kind of match anything like that again. So uh, I really hope that in the Olympics go ahead in Tokyo and I get the chance to compete in not only just an Olympic Games, but, you know, where the home of judo is. So it's going to be really special. And yeah, that, that's kind of how I feel about the Olympics. And uh, what was the other part of the question? Uh, what is judo for you? Yeah, judo, um, judo for me is is genuinely my life. Um, without judo, I don't think I would be where I am today. Um, I think, you know, growing up, you have a lot of challenges and um, there are a lot of things that you go through. And I, and I genuinely believe that judo has been my path um, and judo has led me to a path that is successful. Um, so without judo, I genuinely don't know where I would be. Um, so yeah, for me, judo is life. Thank you. We'll let you Thank translate you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you very um, much. Do you want to translate to Sensei? Omega oh, Sensei. Um, see side. Ah, Nihongo. There you go. The Kanoji ga yutta no wa. Eh, mazu hitotsu me no Omega Sensei no shitsumo Olympic to wa nan desu ka? Tiyu shitsumo ni taishite. え、彼女は21歳でオリンピックが全部だと。その怪我とか、この え、柔道がたくさんのチャレンジを私に与えてくれましたと。え、柔道がなければいろんなあの、サクセスもあの、うまくいってなかったということを彼女は伝えています。ああ、素晴らしいです。ありがとうございます。Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hands up if you have. Let me see. No. Okay, I think you've tired them all out, Nakoda. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I, I really hope everyone enjoyed. Thank you so much for joining. It's, I really didn't expect um, this, so this has been amazing. Um, and yeah, I hope you will enjoy, and I hope that as the judo community, we continue to pull together and get through this. And just can't wait to see you all on the other side. Thanks very much, Nakoda. We really, really appreciate your time and sharing your, your knowledge, expertise, and uh, inspiring the next generation of judo players and the older generation, like myself. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And I know for everyone at the club and everyone on, we wish you all the best in Tokyo um, uh, for the Olympics. I've, I've got tickets for your day, so I look forward oh, to seeing um, you collect the medal. Thank you so much. It literally means everything no to everyone's support. Um, it just makes me feel like I'm not alone in this. So, thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, everyone's putting nice messages. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. They're all saying thank you, Nakoda. Yeah. Do you see all these? Yeah, yeah, I can see them. Thank you, everyone. Gee, guys. See you all soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. See you guys. Bye-bye. Well done, everyone.